Now that we're familiar with our parent functions, we're ready to do section 1.6, which is going to be on transformations of graphs. So that's going to be when we have a graph that we're familiar with, so a function whose graph we know. And then we take the formula for that function and we modify it a little bit algebraically. We change the formula a little bit, and we want to see how that's going to affect the graph. Now, as we work through these problems, we're going to be using a lot of tables of values. We're basically using tables of values now to avoid the need for lots and lots of tables of values in the future. By keeping track of points, we're able to strategize a little bit more about how to graph things effectively without just creating a table of values and hoping that we get the crucial point. Now, at this point, f of x equals x squared. That's the first problem we're going to take a look at. If you're on the worksheet, it's labeled as question 1a. Okay. I should be able to graph that pretty much at this point without creating a table of values. I know that's just my basic u shape that opens up with its vertex here at the origin. Okay. So I didn't need to create a table of values to know that. Now, I may be able to use this table of values to make sure that I get it to be to the right scale so that it's opening up with the right level of steepness that can make it a little bit more accurate than just this very rough sketch. But I'm familiar enough with that shape that I don't need to plot points one at a time. And one thing that's kind of important is when we were creating this, I sort of said, oh, I'm going to try a couple of negatives and zero and a couple of positives. And it turns out that was a good choice for this function because this function has its vertex at the origin. So we captured some information about the left side, the middle, and the right side. Imagine if I had created a table of values, though, and I had only plotted these points that I'm highlighting right now. If I connected those points, I might create a function that looked something like this. I wouldn't know that it was going to turn. And so if I just create a table of values by sort of picking some arbitrary numbers to plug in, I'm not guaranteed that I'm going to hit the crucial or the important numbers where very significant changes happen. So we'll be relying on tables of values so that we can track the behavior. But basically, by the end of this section, we're going to be able to very strategically graph things without having to just guess about what would be useful numbers to plug in, knowing the general shape that we're going to get, and being able to strategically pick just a couple of points to plot to ensure that we get it in the right place and to the right scale. Okay, now I am going to go ahead and complete this table of values. This is just a repeat of what we did in learning the parent function, so this should go fairly quickly. So there's my point one, one. 2, 4, negative 1, 1, negative 2, 4. Okay, so there's my parabola right there. Now, for question 1b, we're asked to graph g of x, which is x squared plus 2. Now, if you've got the worksheet printed out, I create a whole new table of values for g of x. But the first two columns are just x and x squared, and I just add a third column, x squared plus 2. So I'm just going to add on to the table that I already have here. And I can look at this and I can say, okay, if I plug in x as negative 2, I would square x first to get 4, and then I would add 2 to that. So 4 plus 2 is 6. If I plug in negative 1, I would square that to get 1. Then I would add 2. 1 plus 2 is going to be 3. So I can see what I'm really doing is I'm just adding 2 to each of these y values, the y values on my parent function. Because that's what this is. This is the y value on my parent function plus 2. So 0 plus 2 is 2. 1 plus 2 is 3. 4 plus 2 is 6. So now I want to see what does that tell me about the graph. Well, when I'm graphing this function, this middle column was just sort of a helper column. I'm really just graphing x, and then the y values for g of x were in this third column. So I'm going to have the point negative 2, 6. So on the parent graph, I had negative 2, 4. 
adding 2 to the y value gives me a point negative 2, 6. And I'm going to do that for each of these points. Here I have a point negative 1, 1. I'm going to add 2 to the y value. That gives me negative 1, 3. The vertex was at 0, 0. I'm going to add 2 to the y value. That's going to give me 0, 2. 1, 1 gets lifted up to a new height at 1, 3. And 2, 4 gets lifted up to a new height at 2, 6. The height would be, new height would be 6. And if I connect those, I can see I've still got this same basic parabola shape. Very important graphing technique here. If you miss a point, make the point bigger, and then it doesn't look like you missed it. Okay. <sighs> My handwriting isn't great on the whiteboard. But essentially what we've done is by raising all of the y values the same amount, it's like I just took that entire shape and lifted it up too. I had a parabola. Every single point just got raised until it was too higher. So it preserves the shape of the graph and just puts it at a higher location. All right. So your job now. Problem 1C asks you to graph h of x, which is x squared minus 3. Now, if you've got the worksheet, you've got a new table of values, or if you prefer, you can just add on. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just create a new third column of x squared minus 3. So go ahead and fill out that, and then graph x squared minus 3. Go ahead and graph it on the same axes where you already have x squared and x squared plus 2, so we can sort of track how changing the formula changes the function. And then once you've done that, tune back in. We'll check our work for that, and then we'll do the remaining two problems. All right, I've gone ahead and filled in the table of values here. My new y values are all just three less than the y values we had on the parent function. And graphically, the result is that we just moved that graph three down. Still the same basic shape. This vertical distance here is three. This vertical distance here is three. This vertical distance is three. So as long as I'm comparing points with the same x value, the points on this green graph are always just three units below the points on the parent function. Okay, so we'll try to generalize this in the next video. I'll see you soon.